You don't need coding anymore to start hacking. You don't even need to fully understand Kali Linux tools. Something else is doing the thinking for you now, and that's where it gets dangerous. In this video, we are not talking about normal AI tools, not chatbots, not assistants. We're talking about AI systems that think like hackers. They understand recon, they understand attack planning, they understand exploitation logic without you writing a single line of code. Some of these tools can guide beginners like professionals. Some can plan attacks in seconds, and some can quietly destroy your learning process if you depend on them too much. I'll show you how these unknown AI tools are changing hacking, who is actually using them, and why many people don't realize the risk until it's too late. And trust me, one of them will seriously surprise you. Watch this video till the end, because I'll also explain why AI can make beginners feel powerful, but at the same time, can completely kill real hacking skills if you don't use it correctly. Before going into the video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and like this video. So let's get into the video soon. Before we jump into the AI tools, you need to understand one very important thing. And if you miss this part, you'll misunderstand everything that comes next. Hacking was never really about coding. Coding was just a way to talk to machines. The real skill in hacking was always thinking. A hacker's real job was deciding what to scan, where to look, what looks weak, and what to try next. Tools like Kali Linux only helped with execution. The human brain did the planning. Now here's the shift. AI, especially GPT-based models, can do that thinking part. They can analyze information, connect patterns, suggest attack paths, and even explain why one approach is better than another. That's why no-code hacking is even possible today. This is also why beginners feel powerful very fast. They are not learning hacking. They are borrowing intelligence from AI. And that's where things get dangerous. Because when AI starts doing recon thinking, attack planning, and decision making, hacking becomes accessible to people who don't fully understand what they're doing. There's less skill barrier, less patience, and more blind trust in AI answers. So when people say AI is just a helper, that's not fully true anymore. These GPTs are not just helping, they are thinking for you. That's why the tools I'm about to show you are not normal tools. They are not scanners. They are not scripts. They are AI models trained to think like hackers. Now that you understand why no-code hacking exists, let's look at the GPTs that made this possible. We're starting with Kali GPT, and this one is special because it immediately shows how AI is changing hacking. Kali Linux has always been the go-to tool for ethical hackers and cybersecurity experts. You open a terminal, type commands, run scripts, and slowly explore a system. That's how hacking worked for years. But now Kali GPT takes all of that thinking and puts it into AI. You don't need to remember commands. You don't need to know the exact sequence of steps. The AI can guide you through the process, suggest what to scan, and even point out potential vulnerabilities before you run any commands. This is the part where beginners get shocked because what used to take hours of research and testing can now happen in seconds with AI doing the mental work. Kali GPT doesn't just execute tasks, it plans the attack logic for you. It's like having a senior hacker sitting in your brain telling you what to do next. And here's the scary part. Even experienced hackers are paying attention because the AI can suggest ideas that you might not have thought of yourself. It can connect information faster than any human. So if you thought hacking required memorizing tools and commands, Kali GPT proves that the game has changed. You now have AI doing the planning while you just focus on feeding it the right questions.
Now let's talk about OSINT GPT, and this is where things start to feel really real. OSINT means Open Source Intelligence. It's all about collecting information that is already public. Websites, social media, leaked data, documents, metadata, and digital footprints. In traditional hacking, OSINT was slow. You had to manually search, connect small clues, and spend a lot of time just understanding your target before doing anything else. OSINT GPT changes that completely. Instead of manually digging through information, this GPT can analyze large amounts of public data and help you understand patterns very quickly. It doesn't just collect information, it explains what that information means. That's the big difference. It can tell you which details matter, which ones are useless, and where the real weaknesses might be hiding. This is why OSINT GPT feels powerful and scary at the same time. Because information is the foundation of every attack. If your recon phase is strong, everything that comes next becomes easier. And now AI is handling that thinking part for you. For beginners, this feels like magic. They suddenly see connections they would never notice on their own. For professionals, it feels like a force multiplier, something that speeds up their work dramatically. But here's the danger. When people blindly trust OSINT GPT, they stop questioning the data. AI can make mistakes, mix things up, or create false confidence. And in hacking, wrong information can lead to serious problems. OSINT GPT proves one thing very clearly. The most valuable skill in hacking is no longer collecting data. It's knowing how to question AI-generated intelligence. Now we're entering a much more sensitive area, malware dev GPT. This is where many people start to feel uncomfortable. And honestly, that reaction makes sense. Malware has always required deep technical knowledge. You needed to understand how systems work, how files behave, how processes interact, and how security controls detect threats. Writing or even analyzing malware was not beginner-friendly at all. Malware Dev GPT changes the way people think about malware. Instead of focusing on writing code, this GPT focuses on malware logic. It explains concepts like how malicious behavior is structured, how attackers think about persistence, evasion, or payload behavior, and why certain techniques are more effective than others. It's not just about creating something harmful, it's about understanding how malware operates at a conceptual level. This is why defenders and attackers are both paying attention. For security researchers, Malware Dev GPT can help analyze suspicious behavior faster and understand why a piece of malware works the way it does. For beginners, however, this creates a dangerous illusion. They may feel like they understand malware deeply, even though they've never actually learned the fundamentals. And that's the real risk. When AI explains complex, malicious logic in simple language, people may underestimate how serious and dangerous this knowledge can be. They may also trust AI explanations without verifying them, which can lead to wrong assumptions and poor decisions. Malware Dev GPT proves something important. AI doesn't just speed things up, it lowers the mental barrier. And lowering that barrier can be useful for learning but dangerous when used without responsibility. Now we've reached the most powerful and most misunderstood part of this video, Exploit Builder GPT. When people hear the word exploit, they usually think about complex code, deep vulnerabilities, and years of experience. And that used to be true. Exploit development was one of the hardest areas in hacking. It required strong technical skills, patience, and a deep understanding of how systems break. Exploit Builder GPD changes the thinking layer of this process. Instead of writing exploits, this GPT focuses on exploit reasoning. It helps explain how vulnerabilities are chained, why certain weaknesses are more valuable than others, 
and how attackers decide which attack path makes sense. It's not doing the attack, it's doing the planning and logic behind it. This is where AI becomes very dangerous in the wrong hands, because planning is the hardest part. Once someone understands how an exploit could work, everything else feels easier. Exploit Builder GPT can take complex vulnerability information and explain it in a way that feels simple and clear. For learning and defensive research, this can be powerful. But for people without strong fundamentals, it can create overconfidence. And overconfidence is one of the biggest risks in cybersecurity. AI can make exploitation sound easier than it really is. It can hide the complexity, the failure points, and the risks. That's why relying fully on a GPT without real understanding can lead to bad decisions, broken systems, or serious legal trouble. Exploit Builder GPT shows us the final stage of no-code hacking, where AI doesn't just help, but thinks through exploitation logic itself. And this brings us to the most important question of this video. If AI can think, plan, and guide attacks, what happens to real hacking skills? That's exactly what we'll talk about next. Now that we've seen Kali GPT, OSINT GPT, Malware Dev GPT, and Exploit Builder GPT, it's time to step back and look at the bigger picture. AI makes hacking easier, faster, and more accessible than ever. These GPTs can think, plan, and guide attacks in ways that were impossible just a few years ago. But here's the truth. AI cannot replace real skill. It can suggest ideas, analyze patterns, and explain logic. But it doesn't truly understand consequences. It doesn't know if your actions are ethical, legal, or safe. Relying too much on AI can create overconfidence. Beginners may feel powerful because the GPT is giving step-by-step -step thinking, but in reality, their foundation is weak. And when you face a real-world scenario, AI cannot think outside its patterns or correct your mistakes in real time. That's why learning the fundamentals is still crucial. Use these GPTs as assistants, not crutches. Experiment, explore, and understand the reasoning behind every suggestion. That's the difference between a hacker who relies on AI and a hacker who truly controls their skills. If you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I'll be showing more videos about how AI is changing hacking, cybersecurity, and tech. And trust me, the next ones are going to be even crazier. We will meet again soon. Goodbye for now.